Okay, so today I was going to talk to you about this Sony KDL40 XBR4 I've got here. And um, it's very similar to the uh, Samsung I did the video on about replacing uh, or removing one of the transformers in the backlight uh, because it has a bad fluorescent tube. Well, this one has a bad fluorescent tube and I'm going to uh, do an attempt to replace the fluorescent tube in it today. Uh, this is the uh, transformer over here that is defective on this one. I've uh, indicated that with a little black dot in the corner of it and I'll give you a real quick how-to on how I found that. Okay, so I've got the set here and uh, this one just happens to be blinking uh, 13 blinks. Just uh, thought I'd give you that out of curiosity. So here's the defective transformer and um, here's the junction diode here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my probe on one of the good transformers and turn the set on. It'll take just a moment. Watch the voltage on the meter as it comes up here. When the backlight lights, you will see uh, about two tenths of a volt, and then it goes off. The backlight's off. It's in its air mode again. So this is the transformer I've determined as defective. So I'm going to put the probe on that test point. We'll turn the power on. You can see the big difference. It went up to uh, 2.7 volts. Let me hit that min-max. We'll do that one more time. Yeah, 2.5 volts is what we got. So let's go to, um, I'm going to put this on the 60 volt scale. I'm just going to go to one of the cathodes of these diodes. This feeds back into this little circuit right here, which is a comparator. And if it rises above a certain voltage, that's when you have problems. So let me hit min max one more time. We'll turn this on. Now, as you notice with the meter, I'm on DC volts now. And I'm on the 60 volt range. You can see it comes up to about 36 volts, which is definitely a problem. Uh, normally the offset uh, from these transformers on the cathode of these little diodes is anywhere from about two to four volts is pretty normal. Anything above that and it could cause shutdown. So um, I'm gonna pull the panel out of this set, pull the chassis in the panel, we'll disassemble the panel and see if we can find that defective fluorescent tube. So real quick, I want to show you about testing these transformers. I don't know if I covered this on the last video or not, but um, with the set off and unplugged, you can test the output side of the transformer. And you just want to see that one is 271 ohms. I'm on my ohm scale now. This is the defective one, 273 ohms. They should all be to within five, maybe 10% tolerance at the most. 270 ohms, 268, I mean, they're all really close. So it's just a good test you want to do on the output side, which is the, the coils that have the highest number of turns, so they're the most likely to break down. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and take the panel out of this TV, which uh, is going to involve completely disassembling uh, the brackets off the TV, all these screws, uh, removing all the screws from the panel all the way around the outside, taking the speakers off, and then we can flip the panel upside down and disassemble the panel. Okay, so I've got the um, all the screws out of the panel. I've disconnected all the cables and everything. Um, it's all ready to go. Make sure you unplug this cable from the little LED light. Just come over to it, lift it up a little bit. You'll see the panel comes completely out. You can just lift the panel and the chassis out. Okay, so now to get the panel frame off, you'll notice that there are screws all the way around it. Just go ahead and remove all those screws. And you'll notice these little tabs um, snap on around the top of the panel here. This is the top here. So what you'll want to do is they just, they simply just clip up underneath here. So they're held on with some tape, just unsnap them. The tape will come off with it. So it's easy to get off. And um, you'll want to take in uh, either peel away or cut the little aluminum tape right here uh, that covers the uh, T-Con board uh, LVDS uh, cables to the uh, LCD panel. And let's see if we can just get it to pop off now. Sometimes there's residual tape and it's just be a matter of just 
lifting and pulling a little bit. Don't put any pressure on the glass itself. LCD panels do break very easily. So we've got the frame completely off here. Okay, so once you've got the, uh, the frame off of the LCD panel, go ahead and disconnect these four tabs. Just lift up the little lock lever on them here. Pull the four ribbon cables out. These go to the TCON, the timing controller board. All right, next I'm just gonna take a piece of scotch tape. I'm gonna take the circuit boards and I'm gonna pull them out and I'm just gonna fold them over, put a piece of tape and just tape them to the panel upside down. I've left the end, I folded it over so I can easily pull it back up without putting too much stress on those boards. I'm gonna do that to both of those. Second one's ready. Now I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna release all these plastic tabs while lifting up slightly. You can use a screwdriver. You can use your fingernail. Just keep a little constant pressure. Once you get one of the tabs up, just go ahead and stick something up in there to keep constant pressure on it and work your way around the LCD panel. Okay, so once you've got all the little plastic tabs released over here, you can just simply lift up the LCD panel with the little cradle it's in. You can just lift it out of the way. These are the diffusion plates that are in between the back lights and the LCD panel. You can just carefully pick them up. They can just be set aside. So now I'm going to hook up the power and I'm going to power this set up and see if we can physically see the one that does not light. All right, so I've got the panel here and I'm going to hit the power. And you can see the one tube is completely out. Let's try that one more time. So let's go ahead and remove the end pieces, these two plastic pieces on the ends, and see if we can actually see the defect. All right, so I've got a replacement tube here I'm gonna put back in its place. The one I've got is just a little bit larger than the original tube I took out, a little bit thicker in diameter but I think it's gonna work okay. I'm gonna push each end in very gently. So let's fire it up and see if it lights. And it does, it stays lit. Looks like it's a little Possibly the tint's a little bit different, but once we put this diffusion plate back on, but as you can see with the diffusion plate back on, you really can't see any difference in tint or in brightness. All right, so there's our diffusion plate back on. I put the uh, plastic pieces back on the ends. So all that's left is to take the LCD panel and put it back into place, reconnect the circuit boards. I'll do that right now. All right, so I've got the uh, LCD back into place. It's just a matter of snapping these tabs back around. Make sure this sets off when you're doing this, of course. Pull the tape off, let the boards back into position. Attach the ribbon cables. Thank you.
Now let's fire it up. See what we get. There we go. Says it's on component. Looks good. Let me go ahead and get it all put back together and we'll see how it goes. So I thought I'd give you just a little bit of background information on these uh, fluorescent tubes. Um, these are tubes that I've just parted out of other TVs. And uh, you can see I put the panel number down. I've uh, made measurements on the tubes so I can come close. Um, so you could probably purchase these on um, the internet. I'm sure people are selling them somewhere, but if you've got panels that you've disassembled, um, you can get extra tubes out of those. They don't necessarily have to be the exact length. You can always uh, lengthen the wires if necessary, if they're a little bit too short. You can't shorten them though. They've gotta be, uh, they can't be too long. That's one of the problems. So I just wanted to give you this little tidbit about fluorescent tubes. Okay, here's our Sony. Let's hit the power button. Got it all put back together. See what it looks like now. There we go, it's working good. Let's go check the air codes on this one. So let's turn the TV off. Wait for the little Sony logo to go out completely. And then on the remote, press the button. Display, the number five, volume down, and the power button. So it's display, five, volume down, power. And so you can see we had 13 blinks and it, it shows air codes right here. If you can read that little tiny on the screen there. These numbers down here uh, let you know how many hours the set has on it, 7,564 hours total. This is the number of times the set's been turned on, 2,816 times. Okay, so to reset the air codes in this model, you press the number eight and then the number zero. So you can see it reset the air codes. It also reset the accumulated time. So we still got our original uh, unresettable time, 7564, and the number of times it's been turned on, 2816. And that should take care of it. We've got another TV out of the recycle bin or out of the junk pile as the case may be. I appreciate uh, your views and keep watching. Thank you.